Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and this is the third episode of the Scaling a Rail Screencast series brought to you by New Relic. New Relic RPM allows you to monitor the performance of your application in real time, find the root cause of problems, and continuously improve your app performance. Check it out if you haven't. In this episode, we're going to be talking about expiration strategy and building off the blog application that you saw in episode two. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. So if you remember, we ended up putting these two lines of code inside of our update action so that we could expire the cache when we call the update action. But if you think about this, there's going to be other places where we need to call these two lines of code. Maybe when a post is destroyed. Maybe also when a new post is created. And all of a sudden, our code isn't that dry anymore. One way we could dry this code up is by taking these methods and putting them into a single function we're going to call clear post cache. We would then need to declare an after filter so that this method gets called after the create, update, and destroy actions. However, as our application gets bigger, we might end up finding ourselves adding a comments controller. And maybe inside that comments controller, we want to call that clear post cache action, which is inside of our post controller. Well, what do we do then? We've got two options. Basically, we could move this function into the application at RB, so all of our controllers would have access to it. And the second option would be to create some sort of shared object that both of these controllers have access to. Well, what would that look like? So here we've got our two controllers. We've got another Ruby file over here. We move over the function, and then each of these files would include it. We could definitely do this, but there's actually already convention built into Rails to do this sort of thing, and they're called sweepers. Sweepers can observe controllers, but more importantly, they can observe models. So let's see what this looks like. Now here's our comments controller, here's our post controller, and basically we're going to link them to the sweeper where we're going to put our function. If we were going to write some pseudocode, we might say we want the sweeper to observe the post model, if saved, call the function, and if deleted, call this function. So let's go ahead and jump in there and implement a sweeper in our application. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the environment.rb, and we're going to declare a new load path, because we want to keep our sweepers in a separate application directory from our models and our controllers. So we add that just like that. We're then going to create a new folder called sweepers in our application directory. Create our new file called postsweeper. And start working on that. We want it to observe the post model. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring our clear cache function over into the post sweeper, because we can just reuse some of that code, except we're going to need to change it slightly. We need to specify which controller we're talking about, because, you know, different controllers might now call this code. And we also need to make some tweaks to the parameters, because we want to send in the post that got updated, so we know which uh, show action to expire. We're then going to define you know, when to call that function. So after the post model is saved, call it. And then after it gets, uh, a post gets destroyed, call it as well. Now we're going to save that. We also need to tell the controllers to use the sweeper. Right? So here we say cache sweeper. We give it the name of our sweeper, and yes, we only care about getting called on create, update, and destroy, just like the filter. Now we need to restart our server because we changed the load path. And if we go back and we edit something, we're going to change it to cha 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 cha. Update that, it successfully changed it. If we check our log, I can see up here it expired the pages just like it was doing before. Here's our sweeper code again, if you want a second glance at it. As you can see, we've got our after save and after destroy. We call these sweeper hooks. And basically, we can use any active record observer callbacks as our hooks. Here's an example of any of them what we could possibly use in our sweepers. 
So we would just define a function called one of these names, and it would properly hook into Active Record. Another function of the sweeper that not too many people know about is that you can use it for controller callbacks. So if I wanted a method to run after or before every action in a specific controller, I could write something like this. So this log statement is going to be run after every action in the post controller. I can also do this at an action level. So if I wanted something to run before the index action in the post controller, I would write something that looks like this. That about sums it up for episode three. Coming up in episode four, we're gonna be looking at New Relic's RPM service. I'm gonna give you guys a video walkthrough of how to use the service, how to install the service, and how to use it to scale your Rails application.